Planet to the sun that's not orbiting the sun, Earth is our paradise in space. Although seven other planets, a plethora of moons, and countless smaller dwarf planets make up our solar system, the only planet that contains everything needed for life as we know it is Earth. However, we are getting close to when we might have to abandon our beloved planet. This brings us to Proxima, the Earth-like planet orbiting Proxima Centauri that we might one day call home. But a discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope has raised suspicions, and led researchers to call into question our purported existence of the planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. It may be damp like Earth and it feels and looks like Earth, but is this planet our sole hope of avoiding what would otherwise be certain destruction of everything that mankind has labored to accomplish? Could we actually live there? Join us as we explore James Webb Telescope's terrifying discovery on Proxima b. After six years, nearly every location in our solar system was considered a potential habitat for life. For hundreds of years, the findings from spacecraft missions to other worlds altered that perspective. Only the Moon, Mars, and maybe some of the larger moons of the giant planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune might support a long-term settlement. The giant planets themselves have no hard surfaces to walk on. Additionally, several of their moons are inhospitable to life. While humans have visited Mars and the Moon, NASA research suggests that only Callisto, the larger moon of Jupiter, and Titan, the larger moon of Saturn, could be habitable for an extended period of time. Smaller moons of gas giants Jupiter and Saturn have such light gravity that an explorer's muscles would gradually weaken over time due to the intense radiation fields emanating from the gas giants. That leaves us with Mercury and Venus. Due to its proximity to the Sun, Mercury cannot sustain life as we know it. It is showered in sun radiation and has an average surface temperature of 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus is even hotter than Mercury, lead may be melted at the average surface temperature. The atmosphere is 90 times more pressurized than Earth's atmosphere, which is extremely painful. Can we rule out the possibility of alien life? A significant portion of the motivation for space exploration is to discover the answer. Planets change, that much is certain. Earth today looks nothing like it did over 4 billion years ago when life began. The movement of Earth's surface by plate tectonics has created the continents we see today. A shift from carbon dioxide to nitrogen and oxygen has occurred in the atmosphere. The ocean salinity has also changed throughout history. Due to these changes, all traces of life's origins have been erased. The Earth's magnetic field is created by conductive material located in the center of the globe. Solar wind, which is a powerful wind that could otherwise wipe out Earth's atmosphere, is repelled by the magnetic field. Auroras, such as the famous Aurora Borealis, often known as the Northern Lights, are formed when a portion of the solar wind is diverted to the poles in a safe way, creating life and keeping it alive for an extended period of time until it develops intelligence may depend on these unique Earth qualities, or a mix of them. Stromatolites or fossil mounds are among the earliest pieces of evidence of life on Earth. Oxygen was gradually added to Earth's atmosphere over billions of years as a result of these creatures' consumption of carbon dioxide and subsequent release of oxygen as waste. Life that thrived on oxygen evolved. Scientists at our museum, NASA sites, and other labs across the world are still looking for signs of life beyond Earth. Even if we haven't found any yet, there is another life out there, and we have attempted to contact it. A metal record resembling a photograph was among the earliest items launched into space by humans. The records, along with the reading needle, were carried by the World View Theory 1 and 2 spacecraft that departed from Earth in 1977. These records featured images and sounds of life on Earth. Who knows if someone will one day hear it? The nearest habitable exoplanet is Proxima Centauri b at a distance of 4.25 light years. Given its closeness to its host star, the planet is likely tidally locked facing the star with a permanent day side. How likely is it that Proxima b may support life? That intriguing subject keeps popping up. Harvard University physicist A.I. Lub and astronomer Laura Kabar propose using the JWST to discover solutions. Scientists can use the JWST to study patterns that suggest the existence of water or an atmosphere on Proxima b, because it can capture infrared light reflected off the surface. 
As astronomer Ed Turner points out, though, just because something has an atmosphere doesn't mean life exists there. Like Venus, Proxima b may have a thick atmosphere and scorching temperatures. Even yet, the method proposed by Lib and Kabar is still our greatest bet for getting a look at this habitable planet. When looking into Proxima b, scientists mostly use infrared image analysis. The finding of extrasolar planets is made possible by the JWST's formidable infrared vision, which captures reflected infrared light. Scientists can determine if Proxima b is encircled by an atmosphere or contains water by analyzing these photographs for patterns. This revolutionary method opens up a world of possibilities and lays the groundwork for future planetary research. Discovering how much water is on Proxima b and whether or not it has an atmosphere are the primary goals of the probe. Potential habitability on Proxima b is boosted by the probability of water on the surface. Furthermore, an atmosphere may disperse heat to the planet's dark side while protecting it from the extremely hot surface. Determining these elements becomes critically dependent on the JWST's infrared image analysis capabilities. However, due to the complexity of planetary atmospheres and the limitations of modern technology, getting definite answers is still tough. According to recent calculations, the deepest exposures of JWST would be able to detect thermonuclear explosions on Proxima b, that emit energy equivalent to more than a megaton of TNT. We might direct the telescope to look for strong thermonuclear explosions on the closest inhabited planet, even if these were primarily concerned with finding the earliest stars in the early cosmos. To conduct a thermonuclear search, two obstacles immediately spring to mind. Since thermonuclear battles on Earth are so rare, the first criterion is that the explosion and the observing period must coincide in time, after accounting for the time it takes for light to travel. Second, the amount of energy released would be comparable to that of strikes with meteorites larger than 30 m. Such collisions happen just once every 200 years on Earth. No asteroids larger than 98 foot will be able to impact Proxima b during the JWST observation run unless the planet is encircled by a dense cloud of them. Rocket launchers are another peculiar light source. The Starship rocket operated by Elon Musk SpaceX is our most powerful rocket and uses many kilotons of methane fuel each launch. Even at the distance of the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, JWST will not be able to detect this, which is the same as a few per of a megaton of TNT over a long launch period. It is possible that these detecting challenges will resolve Fermi's paradox in a way that is satisfactory. Technological signals that are more easily detectable, such as those imagined for Kardashev Type II and three civilizations, which harvest all the energy from their host star or galaxy, should be regarded as wishful thinking akin to Disney World's Prince Charming or the view through the metaverse goggles, where virtual reality meets our desires. Naturally, a technical device's terrestrial visit offers the finest chances of real detection. If the alien spacecraft was decommissioned billions of years ago, it would crash into Earth's atmosphere like a meteor with an unusual composition and look like it came from another planet. Some interstellar objects with exceptionally great material strength could be fragments of ancient broken Dyson spheres, assuming the improbable existence of Kardashev Type II civilizations. Atmospheric conditions are a key indicator of a planet's habitability, but they are not an assurance that life exists there. According to astronomer Ed Turner, life as we know it cannot exist in an atmosphere as dense as Venus's. Thus, Proxima b's atmosphere alone does not establish that the planet is habitable. In order to fully comprehend this extraterrestrial planet, scientists will need to use a wide range of techniques and observations. To grasp the difficulties of investigating exoplanets that might support life, it is necessary to compare Proxima b to Venus. Venus has a far denser atmosphere than Earth, yet the gas giant still gets very hot. Habitability is a result of a wide range of elements interacting in complicated ways. As this example shows, investigating Proxima b provides a rare chance to learn about the intricacies of planetary atmospheres and the circumstances that are required to support life. Proxima b's discovery is a major step forward in our quest to find extrasolar planets that may be habitable. The JWST's capacity to take pictures of alien worlds opens up innumerable avenues for further investigation. Despite its relative infancy in comparison to Earth, 
Proxima b demonstrates the immensity of our cosmos and the possibility of life in faraway places in space. Proxima b is thought to be 15 to 20 million years old, which is a baby compared to our 4.5 billion year old Earth. The genesis and history of the planet are intriguingly cast into doubt by this young age. Sasha Hinley, an associate professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Exodor, has been able to provide light on the gas giant classification of Proxima b through her observations. The planet probably couldn't sustain life as we know it because it doesn't have a rocky surface. Nevertheless, additional investigation and study can provide a more comprehensive grasp of its distinct features and illuminate its habitability potential. Scientists have a once-in-a-lifetime chance to study Earth through robotic space research missions thanks to Proxima b's close proximity to the planet. Projects like Breakthrough Starshot are working to learn more about Proxima b. To learn more about this fascinating planet, robotic spacecraft might approach it from a closer distance and collect crucial data. A major step forward in our knowledge of exoplanets was the finding of Proxima b by the James Webb Space Telescope. Planets with large oceanic covers, as suggested by simulations, may also have frozen oceans on their dark sides. The presence of water makes Proxima b a potentially livable planet. The model still predicts that the water would be cooler than expected even at that point. This suggests that the planet may still be able to support life despite not being the perfect tropical getaway. Although the planet is quite close to Earth in cosmic terms, it is still a considerable distance for people to go there. Traveling at the speed of light or very close to it would be necessary for human spacecraft to reach the planet at a respectable speed. Compared to this, our present-day spacecraft are light years behind. Just so you know, the fastest object ever constructed by humans is the Parker Solar Probe. It can reach speeds of almost 430,000 miles, about 0.064% of the speed of light. With an Earth-like planet orbiting our closest neighbor star, it's about time we start talking about how we could send a spacecraft there. The idea of traveling between galaxies isn't completely ridiculous, so long as you can be patient. It's a little out there, but it's really not as crazy as most people think, initially remarks SE astronomer Jeff Corflin, who is involved with NASA's Kepler program to look for exoplanets. It all depends on politics and funding, as physicists have been thoughtfully considering the difficulty of sending a spaceship to another star since the 1950s. There is a new research proposal that examines this idea every decade or so. Several options exist for sending a probe to our nearest neighbor star using current technology. If global cooperation is widely assumed, we may even be able to reach that new planet during our lives. To ride the shockwaves, the first serious plan to construct a starship included exploding nuclear weapons in space. The idea isn't as outlandish as it seems, according to Corflin. According to him, if you're out in the middle of interstellar space, who cares if you detonate a nuke out there? It's not going to affect anything. The prospect of your spacecraft going boom is one of several worries that arise when you consider detonating a nuclear weapon close to it. The idea is that you wouldn't set it off right next to the craft. According to him, you would basically have a long spacecraft and attached to the back of it would be this large pusher plate. You would want it to be fairly large so that you can capture a significant chunk of the shockwave and capture all those particles to propel you forward. Nuclear pulse propulsion, as terrifying as it may sound, could also one day be employed to transport humans, according to Corflin. The spacecraft may be designed to ride more smoothly by acting like a gigantic spring. This would allow it to absorb the impact of each hit rather than lurch forward violently. However, human cargo adds another layer of complexity as rapid acceleration poses a significant risk to the passengers. Our greatest hope for a speedy arrival at the Proxima Centauri system may lie in photonic propulsion, which is propelling a miniature space probe using a laser beam. It is fairly cost-effective, the technology exists, and Russian billionaire Yuri Milner has invested $100 million in research and development as part of the Breakthrough Starshot project, with the likes of Mark Zuckerberg serving as board members. And you won't need to bring your reactor along with you when you use photonic propulsion. The lasers can be directed from what amounts to a massive power plant on Earth. You can save a lot of weight by not having to transport your fuel source here. If you just had a lot of nanoprops, 
it wouldn't take a lot of energy to accelerate them. Despite the lack of mass in light photons, they do possess momentum. This momentum is converted into a negligible quantity of kinetic energy when they bounce off a reflective surface, which in turn propels the surface. This is similar to the way solar cells, which collect energy from the sun, function. A tiny spacecraft could reach relativistic speeds of over 100 million miles per hour in the absence of friction, by directing a steady flow of laser light into space. This would be close to 20% of the speed of light. Traveling to Proxima b would take no more than 25 to 30 years at those rates. One major roadblock to this strategy is preventing the probe from being ripped to pieces at such absurd speeds. A handful of hydrogen atoms traveling at 20% of the speed of light will do significant harm. Therefore, such nanoprops should be protected in some way. They would probably need an ablative covering so that small non-essential particles fly off when interstellar molecules strike it. Although a single atom won't have much of an impact, they might add up to a significant mass reduction of the spacecraft, roughly 30 to 40 percent if used during the trip. The lasers can be directed from what amounts to a massive power plant on Earth. In addition, we'd have to set up a huge laser system all over the world to continuously shower the probe with photons, at least until it gets too far away for this to be effective. Bigger and stronger communication receivers are required, according to Corflin, in addition to big Hunkin lasers, so that we can identify a signal when our probe reaches its destination, specifically the signal that we receive leave for 0.2 years after our probe arrives. Concerned about the spacecraft deteriorating due to interstellar material collisions, Milner's breakthrough Starshot is investigating potential safeguards for the tiny vessel. As a proof of concept for a potential journey to Proxima Centauri, researchers at Cornell University are creating chipsets, which are simply little circuit boards with basic electronics. Our capacity to identify weak signals is continuously improving, especially with the completion of the world's largest single-dish observatory, China's Fast Telescope. If one really wants to build a spacecraft to travel to Alpha Centauri, fusion would be a major breakthrough, Corflin asserts. That would be the way to do it. Gathering hydrogen fuel from interstellar space would be a feasible alternative to using plutonium or uranium the heavy elements needed for nuclear fusion reactors. Unfortunately, there is yet no operational energy-positive fusion reactor, which is a major obstacle. Even though we have to put more energy into the process than it produces, we can still accomplish nuclear fusion on Earth. Not just for interstellar travel, but because controlled nuclear fusion could be a miraculous source of renewable energy. A great number of scientists and engineers are putting in long hours to achieve a fusion breakthrough. Creating a propulsion engine out of a fusion reactor wouldn't be that difficult if we could do it here on Earth. That is why it is imperative that we commence immediately. We have a better chance of becoming an interplanetary or perhaps interstellar species if we launch significant efforts to reach the stars sooner rather than later. What do you think about the scope of Proxima B being humanity's next home? Thanks for watching another episode of Worldview Theory. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.